Great, thank you very much, Vera. And as Vera mentioned, I'm here with Grace, and we will be presenting the learnings from the urban delivery pilots in Latin America, specifically the case of Quito, Ecuador. And if you're not so familiar where, uh, with where Ecuador is located, Ecuador is located in South America. It's a very small country or a small country between Colombia and Peru. That might sound more familiar. And Quito is the capital of Ecuador. And it's a city that it's located uh, uphill in the mountains, so 2,800 meters over the sea level, uh, which also sets uh, some specific conditions that are very relevant for uh, immobility. So I will start um, with the key elements um, of project planning on how we plan this project, this immobility project all together. And I will go um, step by step in the project planning process so that uh, you have a better idea of what we did in each one of these phases. I will talk specifically of the project definition and the project design and preparation. And Grace will go more in depth into the project implementation and some ideas about the project scalability that we have been discussing. Um, so first of all, let me tell you a bit more about what's the, the Quito pilot about, what's this case study about. In Quito, we're implementing an immobility hub in the historic center of the city. The historic center is a World Heritage site since 1978. So this characteristic, it's very particular to this area. And the objective of the pilot is the consolidation of the zero emissions historic center through the introduction of light electric vehicles to improve last mile connectivity and logistics in the area. And um, the main activities that we're implementing for that in order to achieve this goal, to achieve this objective, are uh, the provision of seed funding for the local design and assembly of light electric vehicles. We established also a cross docking platform in the area for the sorry um, for the loading and unloading of uh, the merchandise. Uh, we also work with Technical University of Berlin in the establishment of, or in the design in the conceptual design of an intermodal corridor. And actually some of the images that you see here are from this conceptual proposal. Um, we are also working with local universities and the Zaragoza Logistics Center in the logistics recommendations for the area. With another university, with the San Francisco University, we work in the pilot design and we've, we have also been working with local universities in the vehicle testing as these are all prototypes and new types of vehicles and so on. So they need to be tested in order to be sure that these vehicles comply with all the and regulatory standards. And additionally, we have also been providing technical assistance in order to collect the necessary data to plan the tools in for data collection that we needed in order to ensure that we are we were really uh, complying with the needs of the users. And we have also been working directly with the municipality in policy recommendations, specifically. Uh, we supported in the elaboration of a municipal ordinance to regulate light electric vehicles, which are them at the moment are not yet regulated. So, and now I will jump into the stakeholders that have been involved in the project planning uh, and in the different phases of the project as such. So our main counterpart is the municipality. And in the municipality, our main counterpart is the mobility department. But we also collaborate very closely with the Environment Secretariat, with the Environment Department and the Productivity Department. We have also worked together with the Public Works Enterprise, the Heritage Institute. As I said before, the Historic Center in Quito is a heritage, a world heritage site. So uh, the Heritage Institute has a lot to say in this area. Also the District administ Administration and the City Council. All these entities have uh, granted political support that has been key in order to advance with the project. The second stakeholder with which we have been working is the community. Who is specifically in the community? 
the local businesses, uh, the neighborhood associations and pedestrians, all that are being directly or indirectly affected by this type of uh, project. So with them, we've identified the needs of uh, the potential users so that we can plan the project accordingly. Then we also collaborated with the private sector. This has also be, been a key stakeholder because uh, among the private sector, we have the light electric vehicles manufacturers, we have the goods suppliers and the logistics operators. So without them, we would have not been able to implement this pilot, which has an important uh, private participation. And as I said before, we also collaborated with the local universities uh, specifically, I know I'm going to be a bit more specific, we work together with the Center for Logistics and Productivity of the San Francisco University with the Vehicle Analysis Laboratory and the Mathematical Modeling Center in order to also work on the routing of the area. And so they provided advice and evaluation. And finally, we worked with international organizations working in the city and, and in the country in similar topics and sustainable urban mobility, promoting electric mobility. So we work specifically with the International Inter-American Development Bank, with the World Bank and UNEP in order to find synergies and a scale up potential. So that's in terms of the stakeholders and how each of the stakeholders were involved and like the importance of each one of them. And now I'm going to go to each one of the project planning phases. So we started with the project definition. So for the project definition, it was very important to engage the decision makers in the definition of the project because we needed their political support. So for that, staff from the Mobility Secretariat of Quito participated in the Solutions Plus preparatory workshop. And we made sure that we align with the local policy goals and context and how the Zero Emissions Historic Center that we are supporting through our project is one of the policies defined in the Climate Action Plan of the city and the Sustainable Urban Mobility Plan of the city and other local plans. So that means that this project that we are implementing is already in line with the policy goals, meaning that if there's a political change, the probability of the project to be changed are a bit less. So the risk of the political cycle of the political change reduces a little bit when you align with the local policy goal. And then we've also collected data to define the actual scope of the project. So a representative survey to local businesses in the historic center was conducted to understand the situation, the needs and opportunities for this project. So all this was in the project definition phase. And then in the project design and preparation, uh, we engage all the stakeholders in the design. And for that, as I mentioned, we, we have been involved not only with the mobility secretariat, but other um, departments. Um, so all the municipal, all the relevant municipal entities were involved and provided feedback to the conceptual proposal of an intermodal corridor proposed by the Solutions Plus Design Studio from the TU Berlin, as I mentioned before. So here is the conceptual proposal. As you can see, this is the uh, intermodal corridor that they proposed looking into the area. And this was socialized with all the municipal entities. And after that, with this map of the area, with this map of the intermodal corridor, we conducted site visits to the proposed uh, area to better understand the context and feasibility of implementing this conceptual proposal. So this was also very important to, to conduct. And this stage was also very important because we came to the table with something concrete, with something physical, with like a drawing of what we wanted to do. Because sometimes we come to the table with just ideas, but we need something concrete to show so that the counterparts can grasp what is going to be implemented. So this idea, uh, even though it was a conceptual proposal and not everything will be implemented, it already provided a better overview of what was being planned, basically. And then um, we engage and understand the needs of sceptical groups. And that's something that you also have to take into account because not everyone will be uh, in favor of the project. So, uh, or there will be some skeptical groups, groups that have been doing logistics in our case, in a particular manner with specific vehicles. 
and that are not so willing to change the paradigm. So um, first of all, we had some bilateral meetings where we faced a lot of resistance when we were presenting the project and we were presenting the ideas. Um, so what we did is we organized specific um, peer-to-peer -peer exchanges with other in similar initiatives, similar pilots being implemented in the region so that these companies that were a bit reluctant and skeptic about this type of pilots understood that there were other, their peers were implementing sim similar projects. So that helped us um, overcome this barrier, this resistance, and we had a lot of them uh, now involved in the, in the project. So once the barriers were overcome and we had the attention of all relevant stakeholders, we launched a call for expression of interest to participate in the pilot. And we received 20 expression of interest from 20 different companies of all sizes, from informal um, messengers to very big courier companies. So we received like a range of expression of interest of all different types of stakeholders. So that was very interesting. And then um, when, when we talk about project design and preparation, we also have to identify the needs and adjust to the project accordingly. So we organized a co-design workshop uh, with the municipal authorities, the partner universities, the local manufacturers and the transport operators, where they could already see the prototypes, test the prototypes and provide feedback to the prototypes being um, developed by the manufacturers. And this is the picture that you see here. So we had around 100 participants from all these uh, stakeholders um, taking a look at the, at the vehicles, uh, using them, testing them, so that they have a better idea on how they work and how they can be integrated in their operations. Um, and then provide the necessary training. The first one is the one that I already mentioned, peer-to-peer -peer exchange address to transport operators to showcase other similar cases in the region, which was uh, led by the local universities. And then we also conducted, and this is the second picture that you see here, um, a training to the drivers of the vehicles. Um, so that they can use the vehicles properly, because it's not the same to ride a bicycle, a normal bicycle, than to ride a cargo bike. And if you don't conduct this training properly, you can again face a lot of resistance, because if they don't know how to use them properly, uh, they can face problems in the operations. So it's much better if you conduct this training in advance, so that they have a smooth uh, transition into this type of vehicles. And now I hand it over to Grace, who will explain a bit more in detail the implementation as such of the project and the next steps. Grace, please go ahead. Thank you, Maria Rosa. Thank you Vera, for the invitation. And thank you all of you for being here, listening to the experience that we have in Quito, Ecuador. So regarding the results with, with, our, with the implementation of the first phase of our pilot, our, our e-mobility pilot in the historic center of Quito, for start, uh, as Maria Rosa said, one of the most important features of our project was that uh, we give local manufacturers uh, finance. We finance the the fabrication, the elaboration of uh, vehicles to be in Ecuador. So basically, we selected three startups. Uh, the first one was eCargo Bike UIO. They manufacture the three types of uh, e-cargo bikes that we tested on the first phase of the pilot. Uh, you can see them on the pictures. In total, there was uh, 10 e-cargo bikes from three different models, front loading, rear loading, and also a long jump, type, uh, two long jump type of, of bikes. Um, the other startup was Cedar Tech. They are in the process of manufacturing 10 uh, E quadricycles, the one that you can see in the, the picture of the bottom uh, left. And finally, we also um, gave funding to the Grupo Miral, which is a company that manufactures uh, buses mostly, but they are uh, starting to, to try on the electric mobility and, 
and they receive finance to manufacture four minivans. Then uh, regarding the... <laughs> Um, as Maria Rosa said, we received 10 expressions of interest from local companies that wanted to be part of the of the first phase of the pilot. And we also gave this uh, te technical assistance that was super important to to actually uh, do the, the pilot. So we gave the companies, the local manufacturers, support in the vehicle design and battery sizing to make the vehicles up. For, uh, with optimal conditions to um, circulate in the historic center that has a steeps and we are located in the Andes, as Maria Rosa said at the beginning. So that also makes uh, plays the challenges for for the pilot. Um, we get support in the vehicle performance testing and pilot design with the local universities. Um, we started with this conceptual uh, framework done uh, with the. Um, Technical University of Berlin, this uh, intermodal model corridor that proposed to connect the local markets in the historic center, traditional local markets such as San Roque Market, uh, Central Market, and San Francisco Market. And we use some of that conceptual framework to develop the pilot afterwards. Uh, we also give uh, logistic recommendations and a model for, for logistic operators in the historic center with the help of Saragossa Logistic Center and also policy recommendations because at the end this is a pilot but the only way to, to make this to scale up is to actually um, give a, a regulate a regulation a framework to um to make to, to give the opportunity to new vehicles to start working on the historic center can we go to the next slide please Okay, so regarding the results, in total, we tested 20 cargo bikes for the first phase with the three different models. During two months, from November to January uh, 2023, so from November 2022 to January 2023, and with the local universities, we designed the pilot and we defined four operating schemes, and we work with seven logistic operators from this 20 expressions of interest that we received, we choose seven logistic operators and we designed four operating schemes. And we also uh, rented a space to be a coll collaborative uh, cross docking platform. This was a, a private parking lot where the, the bikes used to uh, rest and also the companies used to do the loading and unloading of the merchandises that were going to be. Uh, provided in all the historic center. So regarding the operating schemes, an operating scheme is a group of similar uh, stakeholders, of similar participants. So we defined four operating schemes. The first one was focused on the supply of deliveries from local markets and providers to businesses uh, located in the historic center. So in this operating scheme, we work with two logistic operators. The first one was Fruteria Merceditas, which is a vegetables and fruit vendor located in the central market in the historic center. And they work with the personal Stivador. So we gave them an e-cargo bike uh, rear loading so they can use in their operations. They basically work with uh, a lot of uh, restaurants, uh, cafeterias, and hotels in the historic center because this is a very touristic place for the city. Uh, we also work with the Bike Messengers Asso Association of Quito. On the second uh, operating scheme, we work with uh, freight trips from a particular storage to a local business. In this case, we work with the San Ignacio restaurant. This is a very traditional restaurant, very focused on uh, tourist, tourist and they prepare uh, traditional Ecuadorian food. And the interesting thing about them is that they have they, their own uh, storage plant in the historic center, but the restaurant is located on a pedestrianized street. So they used to have a lot of uh, issues um, to, to move their provisions because the regulations on the pedestrianized street are very restrictive. So the vehicle makes them quite easier to, to move the merchandise for the business. On the third scheme, we work with uh, couriers and postal services. 
this was very uh, interesting model because we receive expressions of interest of two big companies, courier companies in Quito. Grupo Entregas, that is the representatives of FedEx in Ecuador, and also we work with Urbano Express, that is a, a very big uh, company, courier company in Quito. So the model with them was a little bit different because they worked with the cross docking that we built, that we rented. So they used to, the, the, the messengers, the couriers, used to, to, to take their, their motorcycles and regular uh, vehicles to our cross docking platform that you can see here on the dotted uh, line. <laughs> And uh, then they used to change to our e cargo bikes and then do all the, the trips in the historic center. And the last operating scheme, for the last operating scheme, we work with uh, recycling associations. And um, basically associations of waste pickers, informal waste pickers in Quito. So we work with two associations, La Asociación de Recicladores Unidos, ASORREUN, and also with the association uh, Buena Esperanza de Pichincha. So these are associations of waste pickers that basically they, they recycle uh, material in the historic center of Quito. And then they, they took this material to their collection centers. And we gave one e cargo bike to each association. So some of the main results were we cover a total of 154 recycled material collection points with an average of three points per day. We made 229 trips. Um, we also moved a total of 16 tons of cargo with an average of 313.7 uh, kilograms daily. Uh, a minimum of two kilograms, these were the courier companies because they do mostly postal services, and a maximum of 600 uh, kilograms. This was mostly the, um, the people from the market, from the central market. <clears throat> we move a total of 956 packages with an average of 19 packages per day. And we have... Um, we have measured a potential, a potential of reduction of emissions of CO2 emissions of 491.74 kilograms for the two months of the pilot last. And we travel a distance of 1,071 kilometers with an average of 21 kilometers daily. Uh, I also have to mention that sadly we have one we, we had one in accident but it was just an, a turning over uh, of one of the bikes and that was also part of the experience in the, in the two months only one accident can we and it wasn't major <laughs> we also have the most the, the most important results of the first phase of the pilot but for each one of the operating schemes so on the first operating scheme we saw an increase of the 75% 70, increase on the income per hour of the Stevador that use our e-cargo bike. You can see the picture over here of Angel. Um, he also reduced in 43% his working hours, which means that he was more, more efficient. He was moving more packages in less time. So basically increasing his quality of life. Um, the increase on the packages per trip was of 100%. So basically, he doubled up the amount of, of cargo he used to, to, to give to the um, businesses in the historic center. On the second scheme, we got an increase of 50%, uh, I mean, a decrease of 50% in the working hours because uh, this restaurant used to, to, to work with a regular car, a regular uh, vehicle. and used to spend a lot of time on the traffic that the historic center has to try to enter to this pedestrianized street where the, where the business is located. Uh, the efficiency on the on the packages per trip also double up. And at the same time, the, the volume transported double up with the use of our e-cargo bike. And as you can see, the e-cargo bike used to enter 
to the restaurant with any restrictions on the pedestrian street. Regarding the third scheme, this is the case of uh, Grupo Entregas, the representatives of FedEx, and they had an increase from eight packages to 35 packages from the beginning of the pilot to the end of the pilot. In this case, it was important that they were very able to, to adapt the pilot to their needs, so, so they expanded the, the area of, of influence. And regarding the fourth scheme, we got an increase of 25% on the monthly income of the waste pickers. This is, this is a social gain for us, so we are very happy about this. A, a reduction of 56% uh, in the working hours, so also uh, getting better the, the working conditions for these people that are very informal and they have a precarious job. And the efficiency in the packages uh, per trip also double up. So some of our main findings are that uh, five out of the seven logistic operators read, read the solutions as excellent and would like to continue using it. Actually, we already gave the, the 10 e-bikes on permanent custody, and these bicycles are being implemented uh, continually on the, on the historic center, still working. Uh, we have efficiency gains in all the operating scheme. So we can see that this has a scale up, a scale up and replic replication potential. And sadly, we also realized that the perception of female riders is rather negative. Actually, the accident that we had was with uh, female riders. So we can also see that there's like a gender gap in the use of this type of vehicles, and it's something that we need to to work towards to to have more women using this type of, of vehicles. No, can we go? Yeah. And finally, this is the, the plans that we have ahead in Quito. Right now, we finished the first phase with this, this 10 e cargo bikes. And now we are hoping to start the phase two of the pilot with uh, the 10 e quadricycles by the last quarter of this year. These uh, e quadricycles are being assembled with power trains that came for, uh, from France that took a little longer, but right now they're, they're uh, almost done, the 10 e-quadricycles. And then we have a third phase where we're going to try the four events, and we hope to do that also by the end of this year or the uh, beginning of next year. That will be it. If you have any questions, we're open to answer them. And thank you very much for your attention.